we want to find an equation for the graph of the degree five polynomial function and leave the function in factored form. Because we have a degree five polynomial function, we know we have at most five real rational zeros or roots. So let's analyze our graph. Notice the graph only has two x-intercepts, one here at negative two and another here at positive two. But because of how the graph behaves, the multiplicity of these roots is not equal to one. Looking at the x-intercept or zero of negative two, notice how it touches the x-axis but does not cross the x-axis. That means this root or zero must have an even multiplicity. So we'll go ahead and assume it has multiplicity two. It could be four but not six because we know the degree is five. So let's also analyze the zero at positive two. Notice how it crosses the x-axis at positive two, which means the multiplicity must be odd. But also notice how it flattens out at positive two. It doesn't just cross through it. That means the multiplicity must be greater than one. Well, an odd number that's greater than one that would still meet the requirement of having a degree five polynomial means this would have a multiplicity of three. We know it couldn't be five because then the total degree would be higher than a degree five polynomial function. So this root or zero has multiplicity two. This has multiplicity three. So we have five real rational zeros. And because we have these zeros of the function, we can find the equation of the function in factored form using the form given here below, where r sub one, r sub two, r sub three, and so on are the roots or zeros of the function, and a is a constant. So to find the value of a, we'll also have to find one more point on the function. Let's go ahead and use the y-intercept here. So we use the point with coordinates zero, thirty-two. So what we'll do is first find the factors of our quadratic function, and then we'll use this point here to determine the value of a. So we'll have f of x equals a times, the first zero is x equals negative two, so one factor must be x minus negative two, which would be x plus two. But because it has multiplicity two, meaning this is a double zero, we'd actually have two factors of x plus two, or the quantity x plus two squared. The next zero is x equals positive two, which means you must have a factor of x minus two. But because this is a triple zero, or has multiplicity three, we'd have three factors of x minus two, or the quantity x minus two to the third power. So these must be the factors of our polynomial function, and now we'll use this point here to determine the value of a. If this function contains the point zero thirty-two, then f of zero must equal thirty-two. And we can use this to find the value of a. So now we'll set x equal to zero, and set this function value equal to thirty-two. So we would have a times, if x is zero, this would be two to the second. And if x is zero here, we'd have negative two to the third, and this must equal positive thirty-two. Now we'll go ahead and simplify here and solve for a. Well, two squared is four and negative two cubed is negative eight. Four times negative eight is negative thirty-two. So we have negative thirty-two a here equals thirty-two. Divide both sides by negative thirty-two. So we can see that a is going to be equal to negative one. And this is all we need to write the function in factored form. We'll substitute negative one for a in this form here. So we'll have f of x equals negative one or just negative, and then the quantity x plus two squared times the quantity x minus two to the third. Okay, we'll take a look at one more example in the next video. Hope you found this helpful.